Hello, welcome to Straight Talk Africa, live from the Voice of America studios here in Washington. It's Wednesday, July 4th. I am Shaka Sali. Today, a report card on the challenges of independence on the continent and what it has meant for the vast majority of the African people. Here in the United States, we are celebrating America, our freedom, our families, and those in service to the nation, even our own end of colonial ties and dominance from England in 1776. Like many nations on the continent, we too were once part of that vast colonial empire until the American colonies thirst for independence grew unbearable. My colleague Paul Sisko has more on the story. This evening, here in the nation's capital and across the United States, the skies will light up with traditional bombs bursting in air and colorful fireworks. We are celebrating independence, sovereignty, just like that hard fought and achieved by many African nations half a century ago. It gives us pause to ask, what has independence for the former colonies of France, Portugal, Spain, and England meant for Africans? Ghana was the first sub-Saharan African country achieving its independence from Britain on March 6, 1957. It was a proud and a new day for all Africans when Kwame Nkrumah, Ghana's first president, declared his nation free and independent. At long last, the battle has ended. His words echoed across the continent. Our independence is meaningless, he said, unless it is linked up with the total liberation of Africa. Ghana is free forever. A year later, Guinea declared its independence from France. In 1960, 18 more nations in sub-Saharan Africa became independent of their colonial rulers. It was an unstoppable movement. Nelson Mandela walked to freedom February 11, 1990, after 27 years in jail, and became president of South Africa four years later. With apartheid gone forever and Mandela as president, finally, South Africa too became at last a truly free and independent nation. Dr. Ali Mazuri knows political independence has not come easily to Africa, nor has it proven to be a guarantee of freedom. Well, of course it's independent in the formal sense of having governments of relatively own choosing and uh, being autonomous as sovereign states. But because most African countries are weak politically and economically, there's considerable dependence on other societies. And then if you ask are African people free, that's a harder question than whether African states are free. Because African people sometimes suffer a lack of freedom as a result of their own governments rather than as a result of the global state of affairs. The decades after regaining independence from their colonial rulers have been marked more by violence than development. Branded by border conflicts, coups, corruption, and no less than 22 civil wars. Success stories include Ghana's, Benin, Botswana, and Mauritius. In Mauritius, everyone's education and health care are free and considered human rights. Those countries are among the least corrupt countries in Africa, according to Transparency International. Increasingly, though not exclusively, free and fair elections are more the rule than the exception on the continent. But corruption, weak institutions, and post-election trials and tribulations are frequent dangers, threatening democracy and stability in many sub-Saharan African countries. Meanwhile, the new Republic of South Sudan the world and Africa's newest nation, continues to face the toughest of challenges as it too struggles to find its place as an independent country in the community of nations. Paul Sisko, VOA News. 